Most of us are only one to 10% away from greatness. But we think we're so far away from it that we never try. And once I started going down this journey, I started realizing that, and those percents started to add up. And before I knew it, my mind started hardening and I started passing so many different people that I thought were so far above me. And then before I knew it, man, I became a common amongst the uncommon. What if adversity wasn't a problem to you? What if it wasn't a problem? What if it was a privilege? But if you think back in your life, again, your biggest growth moments came from your biggest pain moments. If you look back on your life, you realize, man, I had a privilege to go through that. That adversity builds your purpose, makes you understand your purpose more. It's easy to use your childhood as a crutch instead of seeing it as a chisel. I always hear people say, my family is so dysfunctional, using it as an excuse or something but is not really a valid excuse because everybody's family is dysfunctional in some way. There are so many crutches people want to use to justify themselves, but for me, you have to eliminate every single one of them. Get rid of them all. Then tell yourself it's up to you. What are you going to do now that you let go of all those crutches? And you have to be willing to put yourself in very difficult situations at all times to be able to do that. So my big takeaway of life is, if you're constantly taking the easy way out, you're never gonna callous your mind. And when you're in those points where you wanna quit, and not quitting, and seeing how the mind starts to operate in those moments of fear, anxiety, self-doubt, insecurities, and that's where you learn to fix it. You don't fix it in 72 degree weather. Fix it yes. by going into the environment. Can we define a bad day without comparing it by definition to a good day? And vice versa. We decide what a good day is by comparing it to what a bad day would be. You can't have good days if you don't have bad days. If there are no bad days, the good days don't exist. That's why failure is so important. Like failing and fucking up and making mistakes, it's very important. You, that's how you learn. That's how you, the bad feeling that you get from something that you shouldn't have done or wish you didn't do or wish you did better. It's dangerous to dwell on past mistakes because people sort of define themselves by the worst moments that they've ever had. They don't like the feeling of failure, so they keep low expectations so that they never have to feel that. You gotta get through it. You know, first and foremost, I, I think about my life and I think about adversity and I think about opposition, but for the most part of my life, I've been on this quest to figure out how can I work hard for something and my performance is not based upon the outcome? How can I work and my, my effort and my motivation and my drive is not based upon what the product will be, but more so based upon me taking pride in what I do. And so I came up with this thing called process over product. And what I mean by the process, I'm talking about the way I handle my business on a daily basis and the way I go about every single aspect of my life. I live by this thing called empty the bucket. But what they don't understand, it's an unspoken law, an empty the bucket, it's an unspoken law of accountability and responsibility to me on this earth and my existence and everybody that is connected to me. I may be crazy, but I don't know. I just believe that I'm supposed to give everybody that is connected to me the best version of me. Be kind to yourself. You are actually doing the best you can.
it's really heavy when you start to look at your you know you look at your life you look at your health you look at your business you look at your family you look at your relationships and you look at all those things that are messed up in all those areas and when you say all those things all those problems in my business my life my health all those things are my fault that's really a heavy weight to bear but it's also extremely liberating cuz if it's all your fault. You're the one that can fix it. Yeah. You're the one that can get your business back together. You can repair the relationships. You can get yourself healthy. Like you can take control of all those things. I was the one holding me back. I was the one looking for the scapegoat. And you know, I was the one looking for all these ways to say, it's okay, David. You're a loser. You're a born loser. So it's okay. It's on me. The people around me are fucked up. They're not going to save you. You gotta save yourself, my friend. I was like, man, this rest of your life is gonna suck. It is gonna suck, not because you're gonna be a loser, but because you're gonna finally start to win. And winning is not easy, my friend. Winning requires you to go so far deep inside yourself. It's way beyond the surface. It's way beyond internal. It's going to a place that a lot of people haven't visited in a long, long time because they're afraid to visit that person because when they visit that person, they don't know who that person is anymore. There are times where you want to quit. It's natural. You get frustrated, you've been disrespected. You're discounted. There are people who overlook you. But well, don't quit. Resign. Resign yourself to the fact that there's more inside of you. Answer the desire, that thirst inside of you that says, I deserve more, I am more, I want to be more. Resign yourself to the fact that you will improve and do whatever it takes so that you become everything you were called to be. You've lived a life dominated by doubt and fear. How do you step into bravery? That step towards your fear is the step into bravery. Because we, we're, we're scared of what we don't know. And there is only one way to learn and to know. And that is to confront that fear. You have to step, you have to go. And this simple action, this simple attitude, it answers so many questions. See, with all of us have greatness within us. But when you don't come to grips with your greatness and you don't work to develop it, if you're not seeking it out, if you're not finding where it is, if you're not trying to locate it, if you're not experimenting with your life to try and find out what fits for you, I'm saying that you're positioning yourself to be a miserable person, an unfulfilled person. Some days I win. Some days I don't. But each and every day, I get back up. And I move forward. With my fists clenched toward the battle, toward the struggle. And I fight with everything I've got. You've got to develop a sense of urgency. Aurelia said, stop living your life like you have a thousand years to live. But you gotta want it more than anything. Don't quit on your dreams. Quit on other people's purposes for your life. They don't know what you, 
you dream about at night. But you know your dreams keep interrupting your sleep. It's like someone is waking you up saying, it's time. It's like someone is saying, keep staring at the ceiling until you can create a vision board in your mind and, and paint it on the ceiling large enough that you see it every day. What type of legacy do you want to leave? There's a purpose to everything you've been through. And there's a reason why it was given to you. You were born for such a time as this. You avoid things that stand in your way that frighten you at your great peril. If you cower from them, in silence, or you turn away seeking security even, or even sensible security, you violate the principle of your own strength. And if you violate the principle of your own strength, you become weak. And if you're weak, there is no security. Like if you're weak and you have a pension, you're weak with a pension. All that'll mean is that you'll live longer in terror. That's not helpful. To truly change is to think greater than your environment. And every great person in history knew this. They all had an idea, couldn't see it, couldn't smell it, couldn't taste it, couldn't feel it. But it was alive in their mind. So can you believe in a future that you can't see or experience with your senses yet? But you've thought about enough times in your mind that your brain is literally changed to look like the event has already happened? It's not to quit on your dream. It's to quit living other people's purpose for your life. They don't know what's inside of you, but you do. Open it up. Open yourself up to grow. Challenge yourself to be more. So you can serve more. So you can do more. Everyone already has the answer inside of them. You're not really learning anything new, you're just trying to get rid of all the bad lessons you learned. And for me, one of the ways I've always thought about it is you can't take the world further than where you visited internally. The sun's always out, but often it's covered with the clouds. It's, it's, the sun is always out. It's just get covered by the clouds, and that's us. We've just been covered. And we get covered by those clouds, and they cloud our identity, they cloud our perception. And so all we're doing for ourselves and others is clearing out the clouds. And the more we do that for ourselves, the more we can do it for others, and the more we do it for others, the more we do it for ourselves. Make the hard decisions, make the sacrifices, make the unpopular decisions, and become comfortable in your own skin. And if you are not a person that you are comfortable being alone with, that is the one person in this universe that you have full power, full right, and full responsibility to change. Life is not easy, it is not. Don't try to make it that way. Life's not fair, it never was, it isn't now, and it won't ever be. Do not fall into the trap, the entitlement trap, of feeling like you're a victim. You are not. Get over it and get on with it. And yes, most things are more rewarding when you break a sweat to get them. Empty your mind, be formless, shapeless, like water. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. One of the biggest things that you'll ever face in life is the challenge of living out your dream. You see, when you finally sit down and you write it down, there's really no consequence to it until you put a date to it. Put a date to it and then make a date with it. The date to it is, is your day that you will make sure, come hell or high water, I will do everything that I said I would do and this is exactly when it will be done. You have the ability to do amazing things, but you won't be able to do them until you step out on faith. If you say the truth and, and nothing else, you'll have a immense adventure as a consequence. You won't know what's going to happen to you, and you have to let go of your clinging to the, to the outcome. You have to let go. 
but the truth will reveal the world the way it's intended to be revealed and the consequence for you will be that you'll have the adventure of your life. The challenge is not potential. The challenge is not even talent. The challenge is desire. They said effort is the indicator of interest. And so I think the biggest challenge is that people have potential. They actually have some skill set. I just think most people don't want it. They don't put forth the effort. And you're only giving 70%. What would life look like if you gave 120%? What would it look like if you actually worked for every check you got? I truly believe that the difference between humans is how bad they want it. Take ownership of it and decide to go back to the drawing board and rewrite the script that you are the star of. You have the power to do that. On this day, you can declare that I'm going to change. As you look back on your life, you can decide that I don't like what I've produced here and I want higher ground. I want to begin to experience more love. I want to have more adventure in my life. I want something that gives my life a sense of meaning. Now, I can appreciate that life is hard. I can appreciate that it's a struggle. I can appreciate that there's all kinds of things not going your way. But guess what? They're never gonna, unless you make them. You're blind to your own weaknesses, but you're also blind to your own strengths. How far could you take that? if you stopped wasting time, and if you stopped lying, and if you oriented yourself to the highest possible good that you could conceive of, and you committed to that. How much good could you do? Well, I would say, why don't you find out? Step out and step in. Fate has been calling you since birth, but you have to decide, is it your birthright? It's yours. Begin to claim it. You can manifest it the moment you begin to speak it. You want a bigger home? Speak it. You want a bigger career? Speak it. You want to make it to the NBA? Speak it. You want to make it in the NFL? Speak it. Begin to believe it. There may be different routes to your dream, so never give up. And a lot of us have a lot of people who support us. They support us going to school, support us with our business, support us with losing weight, with diets, all this other stuff. But they also support us when we want to quit. So that's not a good foxhole. While you're looking to get to the next level, it's truly important, look at that foxhole. Some of those people from high school, from college, they may not belong in that foxhole with you because as you grow, they stay exactly where they are. And they can't stand seeing you grow. You may sit there and look at yourself. Maybe you're even believing that because you were born a certain race or you were born to certain parents or you had shitty parents or you've suffered from depression or you're overweight or all these mother things that they put in your face to give you the exact excuse as to why you can't achieve what it is you want to achieve. You need to understand one thing and that's this. Your hardships, your challenges, your situation will either be the reason you don't make it or it will be the story you tell when you do make it and you get to make that choice. It's one thing to be hungry, it's another thing when you're starving for greatness and starving for success. I know what it's like to operate every single day regardless of the success that I've been a lucky son of a bitch to achieve. I operate every day as if I'm starving. recognize wherever you are on the ladder of life wherever you are in life ladies and gentlemen you've got comeback power I don't care how low you are I don't care what you have done I don't 
don't care what you have experienced, I don't care how devastated your life might appear to be, the shambles it might be in, there is a power in you that can enable you to be stronger and better than anything that's out here. Bring it to life. And the only way to bring it to life is to work. To grind and toil and sweat and put your life into that vision and make it a reality for the entire world to see. So stop wasting time. Stop listening to me right now. Stop and go out and do the work to bring that vision to life. My number one competition is me. It's always you versus you. You gotta be the one to get up every morning, be disciplined, put in the consistent daily hard work because that gains success. You versus you. What you do is you should become passionate about your gift. Quit tripping yourself out. You all have one. God gave all of you a gift at birth. When he created you, he put it inside of you. It, you don't got to go discover it nowhere. It's E-R-E-R -E -R gave it to you. It's the thing you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. That's your God-given gift. You just got to recognize what your gift is. That's all it is. You messed up. Now what? What do you do now? Where do you go from here? Is there... Is there a tomorrow? Is there a tomorrow? Well, yes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay some things out for you. All right? If you've messed up, the very first step, the very first thing that you've got to do is you've got to stop. Whatever it is you did, don't do it no more. Identify your God-given gift and go pursue that. Then I'll tell you what changed my whole life when I finally discovered it's all risky. The minute you were born, it got risky. If you think trying is risky, wait till they hand you the bill for not trying. If you think investing is risky, wait till you get the tab for not investing. See, it's all risky. Getting married is risky. Having children is risky. Going into business is risky. Investing your money is risky. It's all risky. I'll tell you how risky life is. You're not gonna get out alive. People are telling you to set goals, and I get it. That's a great mindset to have. But I'm gonna tell you something, that's a dangerous mindset to have. Because a lot of us, we set our goals based upon our experiences, not off of our capabilities. And what I mean by that, a lot of times when we set goals, we limit ourselves. Goals are something that you reach. And let's be real, how many times have you reached a goal and then you got complacent? How many times have you reached a goal and then you fell off? Because you got comfortable, because in your mind, your mind says, I've arrived. And the truth is about life, the ones that really meet the greatest version of themselves, the ones that really live the greatest life, they never arrive. They understand life is not about arriving at a destination. I found that nothing in life is worthwhile unless you take risks, nothing. Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Person who has purpose in their life, they have something to go for, some meaning. One writer described it for some people, it becomes a magnificent obsession. 
but it has to be something that does something to us, something that pulls us, especially into the future. You know, there are many influences on us. One is the influence of the past. Some people are always pulled back, back, back by the past. Some people are always pulled aside by the distractions, the distractions. But here's what's powerful. If you have a list of high purpose in your life, it pulls you toward the future. And the more powerful the purpose is, the stronger it pulls. See, we want to grow, but we want to stay liked by everybody. I was willing to be my own rescue at the risk of your approval. But most of us aren't like that, but we want to be liked. Well, I woke up and I like myself today, so your like is extra. My, my job is to like me first. I was willing to say every day, Lisa, you like you? Lisa, are you proud of you? Lisa, are you playing full out? Every day before I checked in with anybody else. Everything that's happening to you is God is processing. Every difficult moment you're having, he just processing it. Everything you're going through is preparing you for what you ask God for. And if you need to be tough, when you get to where you're going, then he gonna toughen you. He gonna let you have some trials coming your way that's gonna have to produce that in you. It's a big difference between a hard worker and somebody that works hard. Right? Most cats are somebody that works hard. If the situation and the circumstance is what they want it to be, they're going to come out and they're going to act accordingly and they're going to give you everything they got. But a hard worker, regardless of situation, regardless of circumstance, regardless of what happens, I'm going to show up and I'm going to give everything I got to it because I'm working for something that's totally different. Right? The question becomes this. Can you be committed to the process of what you're doing without being emotionally attached to the results of what you're doing? In other words, if you don't get what you thought you was going to get, will you still be the same individual? It's not that life is better than you think. Life is as harsh as you think. It might even be worse, but you are way tougher than you think if you turn around and confront it. Everybody's got a dream, everybody's got a goal. What's the plan? And when you're trying to do something that you're truly passionate about, there is no plan B. When it doesn't make sense, logical sense to go on, that's when you gotta use your emotion. That's when you gotta use that anger, that frustration, that fear to push yourself harder, to push yourself to say, I don't stop. You gotta override that emotion with the concrete logic and willpower. You fight the weak emotions with the power of logic, and you fight the weakness of logic with the power of emotions. Life is suffering. This is true. And it's worse than that, because it's suffering contaminated by malevolence. That's the baseline. But the optimistic part is that you are so damn tough, you can actually not only deal with that, you can improve it.